Greetings, grade 8 and 9s. Welcome to lesson 3, focusing on map skills, specifically calculations. Take out your pencils, protractors, calculators, and rulers. Grade 8, as mentioned in lesson 2, the scale of a map tells us how much an area has been reduced in size so that it is able to fit on a sheet of paper. We can show the scale in three ways. We can show it in linear scale, which is a line marked off in measured units on the map showing the equivalent distance on the land. It looks like a ruler, generally it's at the bottom of the map. The second way is a ratio scale, right? The most popular way. Generally, the ratio scale for a topographical map is 1 is to 50,000, which means that every one unit measured on the map represents 50,000 units on the surface of the Earth. But it's common to measure distances on a map in centimeters or even perhaps millimeters. But there's one thing I know, it cannot be meters. That's too huge to measure on a sheet of paper. The third way is a word scale. This is a word sentence. For example, Two centimeters on the map represent one kilometer on the real ground. Our first calculation will be distance. And the most important thing to understand in terms of distance is scale. Hence my emphasis on scale. The scale of the map allows us to accurately calculate the distance in reality between two points. We calculate distance as follows. All the maps you will have will have a scale of 1 is to 50,000. We should all know by now that there are 100,000 centimeters in one kilometer. Therefore, 50,000 centimeters equal to a half a kilometer, 0, 0,5 kilometers. This means that all we have to do to get the kilometers on the ground once we have measured the distance in centimeters between two points on the map is to simply multiply by 0, 0,5 by a half. For example, if I have place A and place B, right, and the distance on the map from place A to place B is 10 centimeters. If I am to calculate the distance in reality, right, in kilometers, all I need to do is to multiply 10 centimeters by 0, 0,5, which is equal to 5 kilometers. Therefore, the formula for distance is distance is equal to map distance, which is normally in centimeters, multiplied by the scale, which is 0, 0,5 on a topographic map. Therefore, this means that we take the map distance in centimeters and multiplied by 0, 0,5 which will give us the answer in kilometers. And if you happen to work with a map that is not a topographic map that has a different scale like an orthophoto, right? An orthophoto has 1 is to 10,000 as its scale. What you need to do is to measure in centimeters on the map, multiply that by the scale, divide that by 100,000 to give you an answer in kilometers. So in the example of an orthophoto, it would be however many centimeters on the map, multiplied by 10,000 divided by 100,000 to give you the answer in kilometers. Let's try that formula with this map. Okay, let's do some practical examples. Now, what if I wanted to go from a school to a mall, right? And the distance on the map is 14 centimeters from my school to the mall. Now pause and think, what will the actual distance be? distance will equal to seven kilometers right because what you would have done 
is take my centimeters on the map, my distance on the map, multiplied by 0, 0,5, right? Which gives us seven kilometers in reality. Now, what if I want to move from the mall to the golf course to play some golf? And I'm told that the distance from the mall to the golf course is 4.5 kilometers in reality. What would my map distance be? Pause for a moment and think about this. My map distance would be nine centimeters. Am I right? Because all I had to simply do there is the inverse of what I did earlier on. I take my map in reality, which is 4.5 kilometers, and I divide that by 0, 0,5, or simply multiply it by two, which would give me nine centimeters on the map. Now I have a Wellington map, right? I measured a straight road on my map that measured four centimeters. Now this should be two kilometers in reality. Now our second calculation is area. Area is a measurement of surface space. For a topographical map, it is normally written in kilometers squared. We are going to use three different types of formulae depending on the shape of the surface being measured. The first one is a rectangular shape. And the formula of the shape, like it is in maths, is area is equal to length times breadth or length times width. What you have to do here is to convert each dimension. So what we need to do is to convert the length to kilometers. And remember, as you learned in distance, when we convert from centimeters to kilometers on a topographical map, we multiply by 0, 0,5. So we take our length in centimeters and multiply that by 0, 0,5 to convert it to kilometers. We do the same for our breadth. We take the breadth in centimeters, then multiply it by 0, 0,5 to convert it to kilometers. After we have our two dimensions in kilometers, so our length in kilometers and breadth in kilometers, we then multiply the length in kilometers by the breadth in kilometers to get the area in kilometers squared. Now learners, it is important to convert each dimension separately from centimeters to kilometers before multiplying them together. Now for a square. A square is very similar to the rectangular shape, right? The area here is side one times side two, or simply side squared. What you need to do here again is to convert each dimension right from centimeter to kilometer. So you convert side one to kilometer by multiplying by 0, 0,5 from centimeter. Then you do the same for side two. You take the centimeter measurement, multiply it by 0, 0,5 to convert it to kilometer. Then at the end, you take your side one in kilometers and side two in kilometers and multiply them together to give you kilometers squared. The third shape is an irregular shape. So for an irregular shape, what you first need to do is to draw in a one by one centimeter grid covering the whole shape. Then you add up the number of blocks that are completely filled in by the shape. After that, you add up the number of blocks that are partially filled in by the shape, and then you divide that number of blocks by two. Then you add these two numbers together. You then multiply the total by the area of one centimeter square to get the area in kilometers squared. If you want to test this out by yourself, check the examples in the solve marking quiz below. Thirdly, we will be doing direction. You need to be acquainted with the 16 cardinal points of a compass. Now, instead of memorizing all 16 cardinal points, I'm going to help you with a little formula of my own that hopefully will help you remember and be able to do this on your own. Now start with north, south, east, and west. 
Now think of North and South being the boss. Their abbreviation N and S always come first. E and W come second. And remember, they're always read specifically in that order. N, E, S, W. That's important to remember to read them in a clockwise direction. So let's divide the compass further. Now you must remember how to name your cardinal points. And as I said earlier on, north and south are the bosses. So always think, who is boss? Let's do a quick example. When a point is between north and east, how should we name this point? Is it east-north? Absolutely not, because north is boss. It should be northeast. Now another one. When something is between south and west, how do we name that point? West-south? Absolutely not. It is southwest. Southwest. Why? Because south is boss. So south ought to come first. And so the rest can be completed. Now, you can go even further and draw lines in between them. Let's see if you can manage these. Here we have a line between southeast and south. Who is the boss between them? South, right? So this line between southeast and south will be called south southeast. And here we have a line between west and northwest. Hmm, who is the boss in this case? West is the boss. So it will be named west northwest. So you can complete the rest of all the 16 cardinal points by simply asking yourself, who is the boss? Now, going to the map. It is really simple. Let's say you want to determine the direction, right, of Leocorp's highest point relative to Cape Town Stadium. Well, simply identify the two spots on the topographic map. Draw a line between them in pencil and then draw a cross on your from point, which would be your starting point, which in this case is the stadium in Cape Town. And voila! Now you can determine the direction of Leocorp's highest point from Cape Town Stadium. We have now reached the end of our lesson. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope to see you next time. Just a reminder, we have a self-marking assessment right below. Please do try this out and see if you are able to remember what we covered in the lesson.